Hey everyone, last time I made a book haul video in June, I was just about to go away on holiday and trying to figure out what I wanted to read. Now I'm back from my holidays and I got a lot of good reading done and I'm trying to figure out what I want to read next now that I'm back. And uh, so I have, a, I have a huge group of um, like 12 new books um, that I've got recently that I want to talk about and, uh, and try to decide uh, what I want to read next. But the first book is something very, very exciting. This is like massive, huge, earth-shattering event. And it is Anna James' debut novel for children, Pages & Co, Tilly and the Book Wanderers. Yes, it is Anna James, uh, the wonderful booktuber from A Case for Books and uh, my good friend that like we make about uh, the Women's Prize for Fiction and and we started a book club last year and, and just like, and look at this book. I'm just so excited and so overjoyed that um, she has a debut novel coming out. So this is a book um, about a girl named Tilly who lives in uh, above her grandparents' bookshop and she discovers a love for books early on and she, in spending a lot of time in the bookshop, she suddenly starts having encounters with the fictional characters from some of these books like Anne of Green Gables and Alice in Wonderland and like, uh, that just sounds like such the like perfect Anna story, doesn't it? Just like this like magical encounters with fictional characters that have meant so much to us in our, our lives. And so, um, yeah, look at this beautiful book. And uh, she, she's written this whole introduction about all about her love of reading and her love of bookshops and of course her love of books. Every time I look at this dedication page it just like makes me so happy and to see her name on the title of a book and like it's just oh it's just so wonderful. Like you know you have people in your life and they just like really deserve good things to happen to them because Anna is such a lovely person and I'm just so happy that this is happening for her and and so yeah I hope this book is a big success. So obviously this is an advanced copy. It's it's going to be published in mid-September and just oh we just like so excited about it and this obviously won't be the final cover but look at this magical beautiful cover that uh, they've created for it and I'll go on a little tangent now and tell you a little story because I don't know if you know but like before Anna and I started our own booktube channels um, Anna was making videos uh, for this a company called The Bookseller and she was talking about new books that were coming out every month and she invited me to come on to one of these videos once and I think this was about like four years ago it was like quite a while ago and uh, I was very like stiff and nervous and just like and and it's like a bit embarrassing but I sort of like to go back and look at that video because uh, it's it's sort of like nostalgic for me now so if I can find a link to it I'll put that below as well of course uh, to a link to Anna's channel um, if you don't follow Anna already, you can discover uh, her wonderful videos. Next is The Hope Fault by Tracy Farr. Now I read Tracy Farr's uh, debut novel several years ago, I think it was like four or five years ago it came out. It was called The Life and Loves of Lena Gaunt and I loved it. It's, it's such a beautiful story um, about a very old woman uh, who had a lifelong love affair uh, with another woman and this uh, is about a story about a family who are packing up to leave their family home and not just a family but an extended family and so like how these these group of people have come together and formed a family in a in a sort of loose way because their their own families uh, broke apart and it's about them mulling over the past and coming together and trying to figure out how to go into the future and it sounds really good uh, she's such a, a lovely writer so really excited to read this next book Painter to the King by Amy Sackville this is a novel about Diego Velasquez the painter in uh, who's in 17th century Spain uh, he became the painter to the royal court and so he was sort of privy to all the happenings of the court and painted the scenes of what was going on in Spain during that time and this is just meant to be just such a wonderful historical novel and I've been on a real like historical novel kick recently so um, yeah I think this sounds really good. Things to Make and Break by Mei Lan Tan. I've been reading, meaning to read this author for uh, 
several years because I keep like hearing about her and she just sounds really interesting. And this is actually a reissue of her debut book of short stories, which I think first came out in 2014. And uh, they're, they're just supposed to be uh, slightly surreal stories that they've been described as sort of Lynchian, David Lynchian. And uh, yeah, so it sounds really good. Game Theory by Thomas Jones. It's subtitled A Comedy. So this is about um, four friends who like get together over uh, a weekend to, to spend the weekend together and about the like messy things that happen between them during that time. And it's meant to be, I think, like about how like friends can sort of play games with each other and uh, like manipulate each other in sort of subtle ways. And I just love this statement on the back of the book. Uh, it sounds funny, but also like, you know, a bit poignant and cutting about like our, our real life friendships. The Last of Our Kind by Adelaide de Clermont Tonnerre. Isn't that an amazing name? And also the protagonist of this has an amazing name. It's Werner Zilch. And I just love saying the name Werner. <laughs> So Werner was adopted when uh, he was a baby and didn't know his birth parents. Um, he was adopted from Europe and he comes to America. And later in his life when he's an adult and he's getting married, um, he meets the family of his wife-to-be and they sort of go on this road of discovery to find out who his parents really were. So it sounds like an intriguing story. Leila Prayag Akbar. This is another uh, story of uh, like displaced families and uh, this has been sort of dubbed, this is a very like hype thing, but it's been sort of dubbed like The Handmaid's Tale of India. And uh, like, <laughs> I know that's a, that's a sort of hype thing, but, but that sounds like a book that I want to read. And it has a quote from Camilla Shamsi on the cover, uh, who calls it intelligent, chilling, and deeply moving. And uh, also a big quote on it from Neil Mukherjee. So like those are, and also um, it has a positive quote from Jerry Pinto. So these are all authors I really like. And so when I have like multiple author quotes on a book um, from authors I like, then, you know, I know it's a book that I'm going to like as well. And so this is set in a slightly future set time in India when walls have been created and uh, there's like divisions between different communities. And it's about a woman who's searching for her lost child and has been searching for her lost child for 30 years and feels on the brink of finding her. So uh, I'm so up for that story. The Lost Letters of William Wolfe by Helen Cullen. This is a novel about a man who works in a, a post office shop for lost letters. That's like letters that have like, you, you can't really read the address or um, it's been like misstamped somehow. And so they haven't reached their destination. And William Wolfe is a man who works uh, trying to get these letters to their proper destinations. And so obviously it spins out to all these like different stories of people who have written these letters. And he finds the series of letters that are addressed only to my greatest love. And so he starts to read these letters and become really engrossed in them. And it's slightly uncertain whether uh, the, the writer was writing to somebody else or actually writing to William Wolfe. So uh, it sounds like a really touching story. And next are a couple of non-fiction books that sound really, really good. So there's On Michael Jackson by Margot Jefferson. And normally, like, I wouldn't really be that interested in reading, like, uh, books, non-fiction books about uh, pop stars or anything. But, like, Michael Jackson, obviously, is such, like, an icon, fascinating figure. And Margot Jefferson is an amazing writer. I read her uh, non-fiction memoir, Negroland, um, two or three years ago. A really moving, striking um, powerful writing and so like I'm sure her exploration of this is a very short book too her exploration of Michael Jackson uh, will be so um, interesting. These Bones Will Rise Again by Panesh Chigumadzi and this uh, is her story of um, last year when Robert Mugabe was removed from power after he had this like 30 year, 30 plus year reign in power. He had a very strict control of the country and then he was finally removed in this, what is described as a coup, not coup. And so she explores the history of Zimbabwe um, through the lives of three different women, through herself and her grandmother and a woman who is uh, publicly known as the grandmother of the nation. And it has such a beautiful cover and it, it like, it's such a like relevant subject because this is a country that's undergoing like massive political changes. And there is an amazing statement on the back of the book, which I'll read out to you. 
It is, I have come to realize that the answers we need won't come from the places we usually search. Party political responses cannot tell you enough about my people and what has brought us to this place. In search of those answers, I must cast my eyes from the heights of the big men who have created a history that does not know little people, let alone little women, except as cannon fodder. A Welsh Witch by Alan Rain. This is published by Hano Classics, and Hano Classics are um, a Welsh publisher who are bringing classic Welsh books back into print um, that have been out of print for a long time. So this novel was first published in 1902, and it describes the journey of a woman who has become the scapegoat for her community and has been sort of cast off. And it's about her growing friendship with a man um, who has undergone a shipwreck and been trapped in a mine and who's experienced a lot of loneliness. And it's about their connection and running away with a gypsy tribe. Uh, it sounds so good. And Alan Rain was the pen name uh, for a woman who is called Anne Adeliza Puddicombe, uh, which is another amazing name. And finally, The Seventh Cross by Anna Seggers. And this is a novel that uh, sounds really fascinating as well. Um, it was first published like 70 years ago in the 1940s actually during World War II. And it has, like, the, the manuscript of this novel has such a, a fascinating history because Anna was somebody who um, gr grew up in uh, Germany and f fled during World War II um, to try to escape. And it's the only novel that was written by a German about uh, the war during the time when it was actually happening and about concentration camps. And so um, she wrote this manuscript and she made four copies of it and the first three were destroyed through very like different like dramatic ways and the the only surviving manuscript was sent to america and it was published in america and became a huge bestseller and so um this is the story of uh, a man in the concentration camp who um it manages to escape and it's about the the plight of his his trying to survive um so it sounds like such a, a gripping and like really moving story and and such like an important historical document of a like novel that was actually written during World War II. And funnily enough, I remember reading about this book a couple of years ago um, when uh, big American elections was happening and uh, a lot of people were talking and about fascism and discussing fascism and the history of fascism and how we need to be vigilant about uh, the rise of fascism again. And so, um, yeah, this, this was pointed as like a very important book in that respect. Also, there's a great quote on the back by Rachel Seffert, um, who wrote A Boy in Winter uh, that you, I've talked about a number of times, is a novel that I loved and I love her as a writer. So that is it, that is my haul. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these, uh, what you think I should read first, or if you're interested in reading any of them, you know, and definitely uh, check out Anna's book when it's published in September, Pages & Co. It should hopefully be a series of books, um, the first in a series of books that she's started. So uh, I hope you're all doing well and reading good things, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.